Welcome back to another video everyone. So this is the second video in my new series where I'll be reviewing every single Crash Bandicoot game. I'm not doing them in any specific order, just reviewing whichever ones I feel like replaying at the time. The first review was last week, it was on Crash of the Titans, so definitely check that out if you've missed it. But today we'll be revisiting Crash Tag Team Racing, the third racing game in the series, although it was nothing like the previous two. Crash Team Racing and Crash Nitro Kart were both similar. In Adventure Mode you go to different worlds, win races, beat the bosses, then you go up against the final boss at the very end and after that you can then do relic races and stuff like that. Crash Tag Team Racing on the other hand, first of all it's half platforming so it's not all racing, which is something that I love by the way, but the racing itself was nothing like the previous two games for many reasons but the main one being the clash feature where you can merge with other cars and either shoot others or drive around with a gunner in the back. We'll talk more about that later in the review when we get to it. Now there's so much to talk about in this game, but first let's start off with the story. The game is set in Von Clutch's Motor World, which is a racing theme park that he created. Von Clutch is a cyborg, he was first introduced to the Crash series in this game, and because he's a cyborg, he uses a black heart power gem to live, basically. The problem is, that black power gem and all of the other gems from the park have been stolen. So since he doesn't have much time before he stops functioning, he sets up an event. Whoever can recover the gems wins ownership of the theme park. And that's where the main characters come in. In the cutscene you can see them racing nearby and they accidentally crash, no pun intended, <laughs> through the gates of Motor World. So Von Clutch invites them all to participate in his event. The Bandicoots didn't give a shit about owning the park at first, but then Cortex revealed his plan of using the park as a base to do evil stuff, so then they had a reason to try and win the ownership. Pasadena is another new character, and she's also racing to win ownership of the park. And then we have Willy Wumpa Cheeks. Perhaps a rebel or two! Holy cannoli! What is that thing? Willy Wumpa is the mascot of Von Klutch's Motor World, and he's also the main antagonist of the game. No one knows at this point, but he's the one who stole the gems from the park, and he also stole Von Klutch's Black Power Gem. And finally, you have Chick and Stu, who are the commentators. That's all there is story-wise as of right now. The teams then go looking for the gems, and this is where the gameplay begins. You start off in the Midway, which is the main area of the park. And then you have five different worlds, I guess you could call them. Five areas of the theme park that you get to explore and they all have different themes. Mystery Island is pirate themed, Happily Ever Faster has a magical fairy tale kind of theme, Tyrannosaurus Rex is prehistoric, Toontown is Egyptian themed and Astroland is space themed based around Uranus. All of these areas of the park are locked at the beginning, you need the stolen power gems to unlock them. The gem to unlock the first world, Mystery Island, is found in the midway pretty much as soon as gameplay begins. The gem to unlock the second world is in the first, the gem to unlock the third world is in the second world, you, you get the idea. Now there is so much that you can do at the beginning of the game. You can either explore the midway, maybe do some of the mini games to earn some extra coins. Coins are earned through smashing crates, doing races, mini games, side challenges and stuff like that. And then you can spend the coins on character outfits, new cars, power crystals. Not to be confused with the stolen gems, power crystals are like another form of currency. You need a certain amount of power crystals to unlock the stolen power a gem in each world. So you earn power crystals by winning races, getting high scores in mini games, there's some secret crystals hidden around the world, and there's usually around three to four park drones in each world that have a power crystal, and you can buy them with coins. Back to the mini games though, one of the first mini games available is bowling, which is definitely my favourite one. It starts off normally, but it gradually gets harder because the obstacles and stuff increase. And when you get to the fifth world, Astroland, you get to play a different version of it, and that one is a lot harder. One round has a second floor that you have to drop down to. Another one has two ramps with gaps in them. One where there's like a, only a thin strip that you can go down. And let me just say this, I'm pretty sick of Von Clutch's lanes. If anyone wants to 1v1 me, I'm 100% down. But if you don't want to do the mini games, then there's plenty of other stuff that you can do. You can get side missions from the main characters that are standing around in the midway. Usually they want you to go and find something in certain worlds, like Engine wants you to find plutonium, Coco wants you to find a fusion unit, which can be found in Mystery Island. And if you do these little side challenge things that they ask you to do, you unlock new cards for those characters. If you don't want to do that, then you can try and find some of the dioramas that are scattered around the park. Dioramas are basically different ways to kill Crash, literally 
there's 34 ways of killing Crash scattered throughout the game that you can find. Some of them are actually kind of disturbing. I wonder what they were thinking when they, you know, whoever came up with that idea. Let's think of 34 different ways of brutally murdering Crash and scatter them throughout the game and make the player find them. And if you don't want to do any of that, then you can just go straight into the first world, Mystery Island. Which, that in itself offers a bunch more to do. You can explore that world, do mini games, find even more dioramas, do some of the side missions, or go straight into races. So yeah, there's quite a lot to do when you start this game. We're going to talk about the races first since that's the main part of it that's one of the main parts of the game but firstly I wanted to mention that I love the idea of this game being set in a theme park the music playing the different worlds are really cool and fun to explore I don't know you could compare it to like actual theme parks I just really found I really enjoyed looking around the park and exploring it and stuff but yeah let's talk about the racing the racing in this game is nothing like how it was in Crash Team Racing and Nitro Kart there's three races in each world but you have five different game types Types that you can play on each track. The race mode, which is just the normal racing. Crashinator mode, where a bunch of obstacles are placed around the track and you have to hit as many of them as you can. Rolling thunder mode, where you have one lap to destroy as many vehicles as you can. Fast lap, where you try and do one lap as fast as you can. And finally, run and gun, where there's a bunch of targets around the track and you have to shoot them. You can earn a power crystal from each mode if you do good enough. But yeah, the extra race types, they're decent. They make use of the clashing mechanic. The normal Normal racing mode has three difficulties which you can change on every track. Pretty cool that you can change it depending on what you feel like, instead of selecting one difficulty at the beginning of a new game and not being able to change it. You get a coin bonus too for selecting the harder difficulties. There's three different vehicle speeds that you could choose from too, but at the beginning only the first is unlocked. And there's eight playable characters in the game, only Crash and Cortex are available from the start. You then have the chance to choose your outfit and choose your car before heading into the race. As far as the racing itself goes, I have some positives and some negatives. I think the whole clashing and teaming up mechanic is really enjoyable. It's so fun to team up and shoot others or drive a gunner, but in a way it's like a very easy way of winning races. The tracks are also quite fun to play on, but none of them really stood out to me, if that makes sense. I feel like the team racing and the Nitro Kart tracks were a lot more memorable than the ones in this game. I wouldn't call them bad because I enjoyed the races, I had fun trying to win them, and for the most part they didn't get boring. But but they just weren't as memorable as the tracks in the previous games, in my opinion. The racing itself, while completely different to the other kart races, it gets a pass from me, even though I do prefer regular kart racing. One complaint I see about this game the most is about the racing. I personally enjoyed it though, you know, before this we had two kart races that were both similar. This game was clearly trying to be different with the racing, and I think it came up with something really fun. In fact, I think a mode like this would be great in Nitro Fueled, where you can join karts and help each other out. That would be such a fun game mode, I think it would be a really popular one too. But they were trying to be different, they were trying to do something new, and overall I enjoyed the races. The clashing mechanic works really well in the battle arena, where the first team to destroy 10 vehicles wins. This mode is absolutely nuts. Driving around an arena, everyone's shooting at each other, it's a really fun mode to play on. It's just a shame that there's only two battle arenas to play on, because I thought this mode was solid, just as fun as the normal racing. Although I believe the PSP version has two more battle arenas but I could be wrong on that. You have different power-up spawn, which give you better weapons and stuff. I think this game is co-op too, so I can only imagine playing this with some friends would make it even better. There's also two stunt arenas that you can play on, where you have five minutes to perform as many different stunts as you can, and you earn a power crystal if you reach gold score. I easily prefer the battle arena over the stunt arena. I wasn't that interested in it, to be honest. It's okay for what it is, you know, two stunt arenas is about right. There didn't really need to be any more than that. So so that's how I feel about the racing and the various racing modes that you can play. Now let's talk about the other half of the game, the platforming. I thought this side of the game was solid too, I think I enjoyed it a bit more than the racing actually. Like I mentioned earlier, I had so much fun exploring these different worlds. It was really enjoyable looking for things hidden around the map in side missions, figuring out how to get to certain parts of the map to get a crystal or something, finding things that you can interact with like buttons which will like activate 
certain parts of the map, as in like, maybe it'll bring up a platform, which will allow you to then reach a new area. Also, there's three races in each world, right? I mentioned that earlier, and there's one shortcut per world, but you actually have to find the secret areas in order to unlock the shortcuts in the track, which is pretty cool. It gives you just another thing to look around for. I wasn't too interested in the actual shortcuts. I just found it fun to hunt for them. There's a chicken challenge that you can do in each world for a few bonus coins. Basically, if you can find the chicken, he's located in random a, a random part of each world. You can take on a challenge where a ton of chickens spawn around the whole world. You have a limited time to collect them all and you gain a bit of time back for each chicken that you pick up. It's an exciting little challenge, although it can be stressful if you fail to reach a jump or something because you don't have long before you fail and they all reset. But yeah, I loved the adventuring part of this game. Something about exploring a massive theme park with hidden areas and all this stuff to do is so fun to me. But yeah, after earning enough power crystals in Mystery Island, you can then purchase the Mystery Island jump pad, which takes you to the stolen power gem, and now you can go into the second world happily ever faster. This is probably my favourite world of the five. It just has like a magical feel to it, and the music is so wholesome. <laughs> This is one thing that I forgot to talk about in my Crash of the Titans review, the music. So let's talk about that now before I forget. The music in this game was made by the same people that made the Crash to Insanity music. And there's actually some Crash to Insanity soundtracks remixed in this game, which I'm a massive fan of. Some of them, I'm not too sure if they're remixes or just new music, like in Tyrannosaurus Rex. I swear I can hear Tiki Mon's theme, but I could be wrong. <laughs> But then there's tracks where it's super clear, like in Tombtown. And you can clearly hear it in the mini games too. The music in the races is great as well. massive fan of the music in this game. The music is also in the theme park itself, so it's not constantly playing. It fades off into the distance depending on where you are in the park, which is a nice little touch. Once you find the stolen power gem in Happily Ever Faster, you can then move on to Tyrannosaurus Rex, which is my second favorite world. I think it's the biggest one too. There's so many places to explore in there. Buttons that allow you to reach new areas and shit. There's always something new to find. Also, you don't have to go all the way back to a previous world to play the races from it. You can access all of the races that you've unlocked in every world, so that's nice. The races in this world are of course centered around dinosaurs and volcanoes and you have a frozen track in there too. Oh, and also, this is a bit random. I just, I didn't know where I was going to talk about this in the review. But there's these ninja penguins that are in every park. And I don't know what they are, where they came from, but they're here. They attack you and you lose coins if you get hit, but you can just pick them back up anyway. In fact, let me just Google that. Because, like, I played this game and just sort of accepted them being there. I just looked it up and I couldn't really find an answer, so... But there is a Ninja Penta skin in uh, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, and apparently that's a reference to the Ninja Penguins in Crash Tag Team Racing. Which it probably is, because there's quite a lot of Crash Tag Team Racing content that is in that game. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, after you recover the gem for Tyrannosaurus Rex, you're at the halfway point of the event. And that's when they all start to get suspicious. They have a feeling that someone is rigging the tracks, but they don't know who. Then you move on to Tomb Town, the Egyptian-themed world. Obviously, all three races here are going to be Egyptian-themed. These tracks are actually quite similar. I'd say my favourite was the one that has the sandstorm, and the hills, I forgot the name of it, which kind of just adds to what I was saying earlier about the tracks not being very memorable. Tomb Town again offers the same amount of, you know, exploration and all of that as the others. When you eventually acquire the gem in Tomb Town, that's when some shit goes down. Cortex comes out in bandages and again says that something is screwing with the tracks. And Coco thinks she knows what's going on. She thinks whoever stole the gems has some connection to Wumpa Whip because there's a trail of it at every stolen gem. Wumpa Whip is a drink by the 
the way, it's made from Wumpa Fruit, of course, and you can find them around the park. They give you a short double coin bonus. Willy Wumpa is well, a Wumpa Fruit, and he's the one who produces it. But they all suspect Crash for being the gem thief, because he likes drinking it. Willy Wumpa then gets frustrated at how utterly stupid they are, so he reveals himself to be the thief. I think we all knew this from the beginning. Just look at him. He says a few rhymes and then pulls out Von Clutch's Black Heart Power Gem. Then he runs off to the final world, Astroland. A lot of Astroland is floating platforms, and it's very easy to fall off and die. But the thing is, dying in this this game isn't a problem at all. You don't have lives in tag team racing, you don't lose coins or power crystals when you die either, so it really doesn't matter how many times you fall off the edge. If anything, the game encourages you to die more, you know, because of the dioramas that you're supposed to find. I didn't mind that, to be honest, it created more of a chill experience. Like I could just sit back and explore and not worry about losing everything I had or being reset. It makes sense too, since there aren't really any levels in this, you just have a big world with a bunch of stuff to do inside of it. The races in Astroland are a bit different to the others. The first one, Rings of Uranus, is a nine lap track, but it's just a small circle. It's actually quicker to complete than most of the normal tracks. The second one is a little bit longer than the average track. There's big jumps, some sharp turns, and it's a pretty fun track to play on. But my favorite is definitely the final track, Craters on Uranus. You're out in space, kind of, you're still in the theme park, but you know what I mean. There's portals you go through, UFO obstacles that shoot down on the track. Although Astroland was probably one of my least favorite areas to explore, because if you try to jump on a moving platform but fall off, you've got to wait for the platform to go all the way back and then come back to you before you get another chance to jump back onto it. So so it involved a lot of waiting if you, you know, try to make a jump and you missed. But after you get the power gem for Astroland, you meet Willy Wumpa. He's trying to escape in a rocket ship, but it's literally just a theme park attraction. Crash stops it from taking off and then Crunch yanks him out of the ship. But before he could hand over the black power gem, Cortex fucking blasts him and all that's left of him is a puddle of Wumpa juice. And that's it, that's how it ends. We never get the Black Power Gem and Von Clutch dies. Rest in peace Von Clutch, you will be missed. Just kidding. Cortex then tries to kill the Bandicoots, obviously, but Crunch protects them, Crash throws a chicken into Cortex's ship and it malfunctions and flies away. The Bandicoots win ownership of the park, but they kindly give it back to Von Clutch because they never really wanted it in the first place. Crash finds his Black Heart Gem in what was once Willy Wumpa's nose. The real end. Cortex is defeated, Willy Wumpa is liquefied. Von Clutch is alive and you've beat the game. Sort of. Not 100%. Chances are there's still stuff that you haven't done. You can track your progress in the menu. This is what you have to do to 100% the game. Find all five track secrets, one in each world. Find all 34 dioramas. Complete all 74 missions. Win all 15 racetracks. Win both of the battle and the stunt arenas. Play all eight mini games, which I'm going to talk more about later. Get all 142 power crystals. You have to unlock all of the vehicles and all of the character outfits. And you have to complete all five chicken challenges. For me, I still had some cars to unlock by doing those side missions for the characters around the park. After you complete all of the missions for them, you move on to tier 2, which gives you a whole new set of missions to do for the characters. And once you've done that, you move on to the final tier, tier 3. I said this earlier, but their missions are either completed by giving them coins or power crystals. If it's not that, then you have to go and find something for them in the other worlds and then bring it back to them. Which is great! It gives you another reason to go back to the previous worlds and explore them again. And usually, you'll end up finding a new area or something that you missed out on before. Like for me, when I went back to Tyrannosaurus Rex to find the slippers for engine, while I was there, I found a whole new area which led to a power crystal that I completely missed out on before. When I went back to Happily Ever Faster to collect eggs for stew, I discovered two new areas. You can do this little boulder run, which leads to one of those secret track shortcuts I spoke about earlier. I thoroughly enjoyed going back to them and re-exploring them. I also had more chicken challenges to do, more outfits to buy, more crystals to earn. There was still a lot for me to do after finishing the story. Now let's talk about the mini games real quick. I wasn't a massive fan of the mini games. I felt like most of them were just copy and pasted. Like the ones where you have to protect the people at the bottom by shooting the bombs that are falling down. There was another version of that in another world, but it was like literally the exact same thing, just with a different theme. And it's the same thing with the others. It's a bit repetitive. Von Clutch's lanes blows the others out of the water. Now, if you've ever played tag team racing, you might have been waiting for me to talk about the loading screens. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, the load screens aren't long or anything. In fact, they're quite the opposite of that. But if you press the action button while in the loading screens, you can do this. <laughs> Uh... <sighs> 
I'm just gonna pretend that you can't do that. But yeah, I think that's all there is to talk about. There's so much to do in this game, it's hard to know if I'm missing anything. Again, I missed a few things in my Titans review, but I, I feel like I've, I think, I feel like I've got everything down here. In conclusion, I liked it. I think it's a good game, in my opinion. I love how it's set in a theme park. I had a lot of fun exploring each world, doing the missions where you have to go find stuff for other characters. The racing, while not the best, it was still enjoyable, and the clashing mechanic was also a nice change for a crash racing game. It had its flaws, definitely, but I had a good time pairing up with others and trying to blow up other vehicles. The battle arena mode was a whole lot of fun as well. I thought the story was alright. I mainly play crash games for the gameplay, you know, not for a deep story or anything. There's a shit ton of stuff for you to do in the game, even though some of it I wasn't a fan of or wasn't as interested in. There's some cool outfits and cool cars that you can unlock. Again, some of them made a return in Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. And overall, I had fun replaying, re-experiencing this game. I didn't play it much as a kid, and I'm happy that I got to replay the game. Let me know down below what you thought of Crash Tag Team Racing. I know Tag Team Racing and Crash of the Titans both have a decent amount of haters. I'm not sure which Crash game I'll be revisiting next, I, but I think it might be Wrath of Cortex or Mind Over Mutant. I played Wrath of Cortex a lot. I've never played... I think I played Mind Over Mutant like once. I don't know anything about it, basically. As far as Wrath of Cortex goes, do I think that's a good game? <laughs> you'll have to wait and see. So thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Definitely subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you all in my next video.